Loving in Christ, we'd like to thank you for joining us once again in a powerful study of God's holy uh, and divine word. I'm Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you this day. We thank you, Father God, for your glorious spirit that you have filled us with, Father. That, Lord God, that we might be led and directed in your ways and in your purpose in this earth in the latter days, Father. Father God, we just ask that your blessings will fall upon us, Father. And that, Father God, you will touch those, Father, who do not know you from the pardon of their sins, that they might come to a place, Lord God, of knowing that you are the only way, that you are the only hope, Father, and that there is no other way but through your Son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you will illuminate our mind in your holy and divine word. And Father God, that you will teach us something today by your spirit, Father, that we might, Father God, give you glory and honor. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise be to God, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we talk about how we want God to work in our lives and through our lives. and But beloved, we cannot do that if we allow Satan to disturb our peace. And that is one thing that in life that many of us have trouble with, including myself. You know, uh, just maintaining the peace that God has given us as His children. It's not an easy thing because we live in a world that is quite disturbing. Uh, we live in a world that does its very best to disturb our peace. And not only the world, but in many instances within the uh, 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 physical body of believers where much of our consternation might come from. You know, we're trying to do our very best, but yet at the same time, there are those who could really care less about that. They care less about uh, who you are in Christ and your desire to really love Him. Uh, and to find his love uh, uh, being poured upon you. Beloved, it is so much that is out there that we have to be very careful how we walk in of this earth. Because I want to say this to you, beloved. As you grow in the Lord, and as you begin to establish your relationship with the Lord, there will be those whom you consider to be friends that will be jealous of your relationship with the Lord. You may not even know it, but they are envious because of the relationship that is that you have with the Lord. And those individuals will cause things in your life to be very disturbed and try to cause you to act and respond the way they might in situations. So, beloved, I believe that is a very trying thing to do in these days that we are living, and that is to establish peace and walk in that peace, knowing that God gives us the peace because it is the children's bread. It doesn't belong to the world. The, uh, the devil's children don't deserve this bread, beloved. And that bread is peace. And we can have it. And we can walk in it. But we have to be willing to go through whatever process that it takes in order for us to walk in that kind of peace. It doesn't come just because we are praying for it. You know, Lord God, please give me peace. I want peace in my life. Beloved, peace doesn't come that way. Peace comes 
from within. The Holy Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit of God is full of peace. That is part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So it's already there within you. So it is a matter of you being able to cultivate it within you so that you can express it out in the world. So that the world can understand that there is someone greater than you operating through you because of the peace that you have. Amen? Beloved, it is the peace that God has given you. And it is yours, and Satan has no right to take it away from you. But he can take it away from you if you allow him to do so. And beloved, until we recognize that there are individuals in this earth that God desires for us to really put away, to put aside. And many times we allow people in our lives who are very disturbing, their minds have been warped, and we somehow believe that they will, we can help them. Beloved, there are many people that we cannot help. There are people that God has forsaken, that God has put away because of the choices that they have made in this life. And there's nothing that we can do in order to patch them up. Amen? Because we'll find ourselves trying to patch up something that God does not desire to be patched up. So, beloved, we have to be willing to walk by the Spirit of God, knowing that peace is the children's bread. So, let we establish that fact. It belongs to us because it is the children's bread. Amen? It's not the devil's bread. It's the children of God's bread. So, that means that I have a stake in it. That means that I can receive it, amen, because it already is within me. And I think until we understand that fact, that even as Jesus said, the kingdom is within, yes, the kingdom is within because the Spirit of God is within. Beloved, if you have your Bibles, you know we study from the Bible. We don't make things up or come up with our own theories about what it takes in order to maintain the peace of God, but we take it from the Word of God itself because we know that it is truth and that it is very spiritual. And many do not believe that. They believe that somehow you can uh, get things from God or walk in the Spirit without the Spirit. That's impossible, beloved. You must have the Spirit in order to walk in the Spirit. Amen? So first of all, we need the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. That's prerequisite if we're going to walk in the peace of God. There's not a man or woman who can walk in the peace of God without the Spirit of God living on the inside of them. Amen? So we already have that. Now we have to come to a place of being knowledgeable of this fact that it is the children's bread. That is yours. It is yours for the taking. As much peace as you want, it is yours to have. Amen? And you can display it out to the world that they might see that you are a child of God by the simple fact of the peace that you walk in. Now, in Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the fourth verse, one of the first things that Paul writes here that I believe is a must for us 
it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, and again I say, Rejoice. If we're going to keep and maintain our peace and keep Satan from, trying, from taking it away from us, we are going to have to learn how to rejoice. To rejoice and to praise Almighty God. And beloved, when I say that, I'm not talking about in a church building. I'm not talking about in some specific place. I'm talking about, beloved, wherever you may be, whatever place you may find, take time to rejoice and to praise God and to glorify Him and to magnify Him and to let Him know that He is a gracious and loving God. It can be in your car when you're driving to work. It can be in the uh, uh, bathroom. It can be uh, um, at, at, at your home. It could be uh, walking in the park, wherever it may be, beloved. Not for a show, but beloved, for you and the Lord to get alone. I believe that we need to rejoice, to uh, uh, um, rejoice unto the Lord when we are by ourselves more than anything. And then when we get with others and we rejoice and we praise God, that is really authentic. If I'm only praising God once I'm within a group of people, then, beloved, that is not true praise. I believe that you have to bring praise wherever you go. Amen? You have to bring worship wherever you go. And that's why the Word of God said rejoice and rejoice always. Amen? That ought to be a part of your uh, DNA. That ought to just be a part of who you are. You are a praising person. You are a rejoicing person. Amen? It's not just at on Sunday mornings or on Saturday, whichever day that you worship the Lord. But beloved, it ought to be true rejoicing of the Lord. Uh, the fifth verse says, let your moderation or your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Beloved, we ought to be gentle. Uh, we ought to be very moderate. Beloved, toward everything. It doesn't matter how some people will come at you with anger or come at you with a strong sense of distaste toward you. Beloved, we still have to respond in a way that will give God glory. And that is to be gentle. Amen? I had an incident that happened not long ago where I wasn't gentle. And I said uh, some things uh, that I felt I should not have said to an individual. And even though in my mind I thought that person deserved it, I still asked for forgiveness. I still uh, 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 apologize for the way I said what I said and even the words that I spoke. Now there were others who were around who said, no, you you know, I didn't see anything wrong with what you did. It, it, it seemed okay to me because you did it in a, a, a laughing way after. But beloved, I knew within my heart and that's what really matters before the Lord. What did you feel in your heart? Are you being gentle? Are you a gentle individual toward everyone? Or just a few people? Preferred people that you know? Amen? Are you gentle on your job? Or do you come off as one who is a, 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 a pushy person? Are you one who tried to get people to do things the way or think the way you want them to think? And when they don't think that way, you become angry and vindictive toward those individuals. Are you that type of person? Well, beloved, you are going to disturb your own peace. You allow a door for Satan to come in and shake you up with your peace because there's no way that you can be reading God's word and at the same time be ungentle or rough toward other people 
beloved, that is not of Christ. And it will uh, disturb us. And the sixth verse says, Be careful or be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let God know what you are working at where you want to change your life so you can walk in the peace that God has for you. Beloved, through prayer, much prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I know people who have a thankful and a grateful heart. And beloved, they're some of the most delightful people you will ever want to meet. Because they have a true love for the Lord. And not only do they have a true love for the Lord, they have a great understanding of what God has done for them. And they are very thankful and very grateful. Because they know by the grace of God, there go I. Beloved, when I do a flash uh, over my life, and I look at how God has blessed me and brought me through. Beloved, I can't help it but rejoice and to praise God. Because I know what He brought me through. It wasn't that I did not get good training when I was uh, a young man. I got great training from my mother and my dad. But beloved, I wanted to try things out. I wanted to do things my way. And in many instances, it could have cost me my life. Could have cost me, beloved, the very essence of what eternal life has become for me. Beloved, I am so, so very grateful and thankful. And beloved, if we don't come to the Lord as a little child, knowing that we can't do it on our own, and we need someone to guide us through this life. Beloved, we will miss it all. We truly need Him. Now there will be those who will step out and say, you just, just a little too religious. You, you, you know, you, you, you're disturbing my peace, they'll say, because, you know what, you, you, I just don't like how uh, spiritual you are. You're just too spiritual. Beloved, Reject those words and walk in the Spirit of God because the peace of God, as the next verse will say, God will give you and it will surpass even your understanding of how you are walking in it. And that verse says, this beloved in the seventh verse and it says and the peace of God which passeth understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus so what keep my heart and my mind beloved those things we spoke of before being gentle being thankful being grateful, praying, all these things, beloved, will bring us to the place where God will allow the peace to flow right through us. And beloved, there is nothing more uh, plain to the human nature than to see an individual walk 
in the peace of God. You know, many times we think that if we give people enough scripture or we tell people about Jesus enough, then they'll come to an understanding and then they will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Beloved, what it takes to draw others is for them to see you walking in the peace of God that surpasses all understanding right in the middle of a storm. When there's no fear, but rather nothing but confidence and truth emanating from you. When there are a disturbed situation or a situation that takes away the peace on your job or within your home, how do you respond to it? Do you go and try to fix it yourself and until you can't fix it, you are flustered and then you call upon the Lord? And by that time, there is no way of reinstating the peace within you because you have allowed the peace of God to flow right out of you without allowing it to compensate you and to compensate others because of what you have allowed to transpire in your life. Beloved, peace that surpasses understanding. It is yours. It is the children's bread. But look where our mind and our thoughts have to be. Look what the 8th verse says. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest or noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are are of a good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think or meditate on these things. Beloved, when we are meditating on truth, on things that are just, on things that are pure, on things that are honest and noble. It allows us to be able to settle in that peace that surpasses all understanding. You're not going to get what's just in this earth, but God will give us justice. You won't get much honesty in this world. But God surely will supply you with honesty. There is nothing greater in this life than walking in the peace of God. Beloved, I have been there. I have walked in it. And I have also walked out of it. I desire to walk more in it. And I pray that you desire to walk more in it also. Because there is coming a day and a time that peace will be at a premium. And not many people 
will be walking in it. Many carnal Christians, baby Christians, will have trouble in the days to come because their faith will be tested. But as you grow in the Lord, and as you ask the Lord to give you an understanding of what true peace is, beloved, you'll be able to stand in it and not allow the enemy to take it away from you. Beloved, you deserve the peace. You deserve it. For it is the children's bread. Beloved, we love you. We pray for you. We thank God for you who have stepped out and contacted our uh, work that we do here. We are very grateful for all you who have prayed for us faithfully. Because we need it, beloved. When you walk under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and you share God's word in these days without compromising it, Beloved, you will always be under the attack of the enemy. And Satan has some strange bedfellows that you would never think that he could use, but he is using them in these latter days. So, beloved, we just ask that you continue to pray for us. And you know you can contact us at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana. Beloved, many blessings to you in the name of Jesus the Christ.